This is a supplementary video for the longer video on X86 front end complexity. This video shows a simulation of the 486 front end decoding. The simulation part of the video has been marked with a chapter, so feel free to skip directly to the simulation, returning to the introduction and explanation if needed. In this example, the CPU is operating in 16-bit mode, to be consistent with the 8086 example. This simulation is not 100% accurate as it does not take into account certain details that would only add complexity and confusion. For example, there are limitations regarding decoding range of the prefetch buffer, but those are ignored as they would add extra dead cycles. Additionally, stalls caused by the backend are not accounted for here, and all branches are assumed not taken, since we are only concerned with decoding. Let's go over the decoding rules. This is a simplified rule set, which we can use in the simulation. Luckily there are not many rules, since the 486 can only decode one instruction per cycle. Mainly, the rules revolved around the prefix bytes, where only one can be decoded per cycle, and cannot be decoded along with an instruction. The prefixes are accumulated and applied to the next opcode in the decoding stream. All other instructions can be decoded in a single cycle, which includes instructions with an offset and immediate, unlike with the 386. First, a quick overview of the simulation layout. Note that the layout differs slightly from the other simulations. A cycle counter can be seen in the upper left to keep track of the decoding progress. The color-coded legend is along the top, where each byte has been identified by its corresponding function within the given instruction. Note that the 486 treats the escape code 0f as a prefix, as opposed to part of the opcode. This is to maintain consistency with the other prefix bytes. The instruction byte stream is at the top and goes in left to right, top to bottom order, as shown by the arrows. The current decode program counter is shown by a magenta arrow in the byte stream. The decode window is below the instruction byte stream. This window is the output of the prefetch buffer as seen by the decoder. It's a sliding window which begins at the location marked by the decode program counter. The aligner window can be seen below the decode byte stream. This is the set of bytes in the stream as seen by the decoder, with the window itself as indicated by the gray bar. The current decoder state is shown below the decode window. This section shows the accumulated prefix bytes for the decoder, with the black arrow denoting accumulation. If the black arrow is coming from the left, this indicates an accumulation from the previous cycle. There are two additional symbols which will be used to help show the decoding actions. A green check is used to indicate that an instruction was decoded. And a blue circle with a cross is used to indicate prefix accumulation. This would update the decoder state, but not decode an instruction. And finally, the instruction history stream is at the bottom. This shows which instructions have been decoded with a three-cycle history. The cumulative instructions per cycle is also shown and will be updated each cycle. Now to begin the simulation. With the simulation complete, we can see how this front end compares to the others. Again, a reminder that the simulated IPC is based on the same byte stream across all processors for demonstration purposes, and may not reflect real-world workloads. Also, this IPC is the limit imposed by the front end, and does not take into account cache, branch, memory operations, microcode emulation, or back-end behavior. With that said, we can see that the 486 does significantly better than the 8086. The difference is much starker when accounting for the backend as well, however, since unlike the 8086, the 486 does implement pipelining. The 486 also represented the limitation of what could be expected from a single pipeline x86 processor, instead requiring superscalar to improve performance further. Anyway, if you found this interesting, please check out the other decoding simulation videos, as well as the more detailed video going over the front-end architectures. Thanks for watching.